Hi, boys and girls. Welcome back to Smarta with Marta, the summer edition. Did you miss us? <laughs> Obviously, we're missing you. Otherwise, we wouldn't be doing yeah. this. Um, we wanted to just make one more video for you because we started a project that uh, a big project, and it kind of got delayed when <laughs> we started doing homeschool, and then we kind of finished Remote it up, and, and then it took me a while to put all of your work together to make it, but we made the book. It's our final product. So, boys and girls, this is our totem poetry project, and inside, you're soon going to discover it's got every poem that Mrs. Marta's class and Mr. Marta's class made. Uh, as you saw in the previous uh, part of this video, uh, we delivered Carrie and Teus' copies to them today. They were very I, I excited. Don't, I don't think you've seen it yet because I think I'm going to put it at the end. Oh, ah. But just pretend. Okay. <laughs> You're seeing something at the end. Surprise! <laughs> <laughs> so, how are we going to do this, Mrs. Marta? Uh, I think what we're going to do is Mr. Marta and I are going to actually put the camera right on the book and then we will read it to you. Okay. I think there's one page we might not be able to read because it's so small, but okay. other than that, we should be able to read the whole thing to Would you. you like me to go behind the camera for the first one for you to read yours? Um, no, I think we'll pause and then we'll hold the camera mm. like right over the book, but you won't see me reading it. Okay, so yeah. you'll see the book. But not us, this right part, away. This part might get edited out. <laughs> right. We don't even know any jokes. Hmm. No. <laughs> we don't, we're not even gonna, no. I know lots of jokes. I know you do, no. Okay, see I want to see Mr. Marta go. <laughs> uh, 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 again. No more. Okay. Okay. Okay, so you're looking at the cover. This says, Sometimes I feel like a hummingbird, bear, whale, otter, frog, salmon, wolf, Eagle Raven by Divisions 12 and 13, June 2020. And we should also note that the idea for this cover was Elsie's idea. And Elsie, it looks great. Good idea. Uh, the other thing we wanted to tell you is that we already gave a copy of this book to Teus and Carrie today, and you'll see that at the end. But we also made a copy for the library, and we gave it to Miss Eggert, the new principal today, and she is going to to have a look at it because she wants to see your great work and then she's going to give it to Miss Mueller to put in the library so look forward in the library next year I think you're going to be able to sign it out and also Mr. Marta and I have a copy um, just one that we're sharing so when we come back after our year off if you haven't had a chance to look at it you can come visit us because we'll miss you and you can also have a look at the book we'll have it in our classrooms yeah okay this page is white oh on that note um, boy, tell about Carrie wants them to come in and sign. Oh, I forgot about that. So when we saw Carrie and Titus and gave them their books today, they said in September when you come into school, if you would go out to see them at the totem pole and autograph their books so they could have your names in there, like you're famous. So in their copy, they want you to sign each on that white page. All right, so inside title page, sometimes I feel like a dot, dot, dot. Then we have our picture from Pink Shirt Day, so you can maybe find yourself in there. If you're absent in that picture, don't worry, we have other pictures in the book where you'll find yourself later. Yep. But that's most of us. And this says, a book of poetry inspired by the Oakland's Totem Project, written by Division 12 and Division 13, June 2020. Pages so, are very thick. <clears throat> I'm gonna zoom in, you just keep talking, Mrs. Marta. Uh, so we put some pictures at the beginning before we started the poem because uh, the next page you'll see is the dedication page and we had a page we thought oh let's put some photos of the kids working or looking at the totem pool or Carrie and Teus working on the totem pool. So you can see some of kids working, some of Carrie and Teus working and some of us learning. Here's our dedication page. This book is dedicated to Carrie. Teus, Elaine, and Addie, who inspired this poetry. And then we have all your names, mm -hmm. so get ready for it. I'll read mine and then you can read Sounds yours. Sounds good, Mrs. Marta. Written by Ahmed, Isla, Casper, Maddie, Isabella, Blake, Violet B, Violet B, Callum, Charlie, Olivia, Theo, Elsie, George, Abby, I mean George, Abby, Sienna, Luca, Violet R, Shelby, Catherine S, Ethan, and Flora. And from Division 12, Carson, Catherine B, Remy, Hayes, Renee, Avery, 
Corbin, EJ, Penelope, Charlotte, Asher, Scotia, Haley, Hazel, Owen, Odetta, Audrey, Mateo, Ren, Seamus, Hayumi, Mrs. Polyev, Mrs. Marta, and Mr. Marta. I like this picture because Carrie's laughing and Teus is posing. Teus is being funny. <laughs> I bet he has jokes too. <laughs> <clears throat> so boys and girls, the way we set the book up, Mrs. Marr did a really great job of setting it up. We basically took a picture of each poem on a green background in Mrs. Marta's room, and then we put each animal with the other class's animal. So this page is obviously the raven page. So here's Mrs. Marta's first. Sometimes I feel like a raven. I can fly through the air, flap, flap. I can glide through the air, swoosh, whoosh. Raven brings the light. Raven is the keeper of the light. Raven gives us light. I am curious, helpful, brave and strong, smart, wise, powerful, stealthy, and kind. I blend into my surroundings. Shh, shh. I am a secret keeper. Psst, psst, psst. I remember how long we worked to figure out which <laughs> words to use there. I also just want to note for the parents who are watching this, um, when you look at the page and you see smaller animals on there, as we did this, if the kids felt like they identified with that animal... Or connected they, to... Yep, they colored um, one of the animals in and we stuck it to the page as well. And they ne don't necessarily have their name on their individual animal, but, but they, they, they know whose is whose yep. in most cases. So my class, boys and girls, that was Mrs. Marta's class, Division 13. And my class for the Raven is the time we broke off into individual not individual, sorry, small groups and did individual small group poems. So I'm not going to try reading them out loud from this page, only because they're very small on the, on the camera and it's hard for me to read it and film at the same time. But when you see um, your copy in the school, you can get in real close and see your individual poems. I'll just kind of zoom across them one by one right now. Briefly. And if you're watching, you could pause it and have a look at your poem or someone else's. We're just about through our individual poems. There's some really great work on these individual poems, mm -hmm. boys and girls. Very impressive. So there's the individual poem page. I will read the, the next ones, of course, because they're not individual poems. They're larger print, easier to read. But here is Sometimes I Feel Like a Wolf. Sometimes I feel like a wolf, speedy, loyal, stealthy, accomplished hunter that tears into my food with my teeth. I'm wise and powerful. I play fight with my friends and family. I can eat, sleep, hunt, and defend my territory, myself, or with my pack. My family comforts each other and we snuggle and sleep in our den littered with bones and sticks. I wonder how many of you have bones and sticks in your <laughs> dens. I stay up all night communicating with my pack. I howl loudly in the moonlight. Oh, Sometimes I feel like a wolf. What I like about our, pro our totem project here, boys and girls, is even though we are doing poetry on the same animal and the same type of research, every poem ended up very different from the, from mm -hmm. the other one. This one's one of my favorites because the, we decide the shape of the wolf. It looks kind of cool, I think, in the book. Sometimes I feel like a wolf. Mrs. Marta, would you mind reading? Because it's hard for me to film and read at the same time. I, I don't know where to start. Just wherever you think you can okay, best I'm follow. I'm going to start here. Sly, predator, friendly but fierce. Great eyes in the dark, very sharp teeth. Howl at the moon, all squiggly. Pointy mm. ears. Huge, strong, stealthy hunter. Works great in groups. We can be cuddly and cute. But be careful, we can be very dangerous. I miss this part. Come join our pack. Furry brothers and sisters of the dog. Protective, stealthy, speed. Very powerful, intelligent, educator, defenders. Supernatural powers. Teacher, understanding, strong family ties. Teaches others loyalty. Accomplished hunter. Lives in packs. Good communicator. We are very good listeners. We are very good at helping others learn. Likes and loves family and friends. Fast on our feet. Quiet and smooth as we move. Colorful. Thanks Beautiful. for helping there, Mrs. That Marta. Was, that was a, a lot of stuff in there. All right. So now it's sometimes I feel like a bear. 
strong enough to knock down a brick wall. I'm intelligent, curious, and wise. I'm stealthy. I blend in with my surroundings when, when my amazing claws help me climb trees. I'm cuddly with my family. I always know how to defend and protect my home and sleuth. That's how I feel like a bear. Mr. Smart, I want to notice two things there. Mm -hmm. I remember when we learned that a sleuth means a group of bears. That was great. And I like the way we decided to use those capital letters to mm. make it really stand out. Very good. In my classes, sometimes we feel like a bear. The boys and girls made a center poem, and then they wanted to list with similar letters for each corner qualities and characteristics of the bear. It kind of reminds me of like a bear's body and mm. its legs. So the poem of the center the, that you came up with boys and girls, I like to be alone, but I'm very protective of family and friends. It takes courage. Courageous, cute, careful, comfortable, cautious, claws. Hibernating, healthy, happy, huge, hungry. Ferocious, furry, fast, full of life, fierce, safe, secure, salmon, smart, strong, slumber, scavenger, sharp teeth. Beautiful. All right, let's find out what's next. Can you predict what's going to be next? Hmm, sometimes mm. I feel like a frog. This is one of my favorites that we did because we had some really interesting words for actions and sounds. Sometimes I feel like a frog. On hot days, I use my webbed feet to swim in a quiet pond filled with lily pads. Frog stroke, swim, dive, splash. I jump on logs and lily pads, leap, bounce, hop, boing. Sometimes I'm lazy like a tomato frog, sitting around waiting for food to come to me. I love to eat. Sit, wait, eat, slurp. I blend in when I'm trying to protect myself and hide from predators. Camouflage, wait quiet. Shh. I'm a protector. I keep things safe. Guard, watch, defend. Ribbit. I'm a storyteller sharing stories before bed. Talk, share, sleep. Zzz. I love the sound effects on the last line of each mm -hmm. of those stanzas. Boys and girls from Division 12. This is our, sometimes I feel like a frog, and you can see storyteller on the left hand side you decided to write because the frog in first nations culture is a fantastic storyteller and teacher this is a great acrostic poem slimy share of knowledge and power tadpoles turn the frogs growth often helps prevent loss put a symbol of the frog in your purse wallet or pocket hmm. really colorful yellow rainbow Blue, orange, turquoise, black, green, dots, and spots. We come in many patterns and colors. Terrific hoppers. Mm. Extraordinary, exciting masters of enlightenment. I love that line. Love to be clean. Lay on lily pads. Extremely calm. Really great teachers. Mm. I right. think a lot of you in our classes, boys and girls, are have a lot of frog in you. You're really great teachers All and right. learners. Think about what might be next. Dun, dun, dun. The sea, sea otter. otter. All right, so we decided to go with the shape of the sea otter and try to make the words kind of fit the letters. Quietly, but not clumsy, I move through the water. Wise, kind, joyful, prankster. I splash and play in the water all day. I dive down deep. I love water. A group of sea otters is called a raft. My fur is like a raincoat. We wash each other's coats. I'm cuddly with my mom. I hold hands with my friends on the beach. Not right now, though. Not allowed to hold hands. <laughs> I am empathetic and have never-ending curiosity. Lovely. So in our poem of the Sea Otter Boys and Girls, I love it how you decided to make this squiggly pattern at the end because you said that that's how you think the sea otter moves through the water. I think it was really wise how you did that. That's a great way to use poetry, just to do all the different things we can. Does anyone remember what we call that? Someone's calling it out right now. Poetic license. It's <laughs> when you can change all the rules in poetry. I also like in this poem how you decided to block off the different areas that are related to each other in different colors, so it makes mm. it very easy to read. Sometimes I feel like a sea otter. We are clever, playful, and adorable. Our fur is waterproof. It's kind of like a raincoat. I like to be around friends. I'm a prankster, mischievous. 
We are closely related to land animals, small, about the size of a wiener dog. <laughs> our thick coat of fur allows us to spend most of our time in cold water. We especially love to float and roll around. We hold our web paws tight and give hugs to each other so we don't drift away. I like lying on the beach, just chilling, sunbathing, and a little head scratching. <laughs> Joyful, highly valued, connected to nobility, friendship. We have never ending curiosity, giver, peace, happiness, kindness, empathy, graceful, and joyful. This is Martin. I love how both our poems have the similar messages, but presented very differently. I know. That's really great. All right. What do you think is going to be next? Think about the ones we haven't done yet. Mm, the whale. The whale. All right. Sometimes I feel like a whale. I am an excellent swimmer. I dive down deep. I splash in the water. Sploosh, sploosh. Good sound words. I stay close to my family and loved ones and guard my pod to keep predators away. Powerful, intelligent, strong, graceful, happy, caring, stealthy, friendly, gigantic, wise. I also like to see with all of these things on here that so many of you could connect with this animal and feel this way about yourself. Identify. And you yeah. notice that the same in this one. Look at all the whales that you colored, boys and girls, because you identify as you sometimes feel like a whale. And I also like in your decision... Sorry, the cord's getting caught in my feet, boys and girls, when I'm <laughs> moving around. I love how, boys and girls, you decided to make the poem be like it's in the water and the mm -hmm. whale's jumping out. Like that was a great idea you came up with. And the poetry you came up with, around the whale, you wanted the three words that really symbolize what the whale means to uh, First Nations. Family, caring, protection. Sometimes I feel like a whale. I am the guardian of the sea. The seals are my workers and the dolphins are my warriors. Together we protect the ocean. I travel with my pod and stay with my family my entire life. We are connected. And the words from the top continue down. Longevity, community, harmony. All right, think about what might be next. Ah, so this is when we got to the part where in my class we had Mr. Phillips as our student teacher. So we had a little bit of a pause with the poems because he was teaching and I wasn't. And I'm like, don't worry, I'll just finish those when he's done. But we, but in Division 12, we were able to keep going because right. we didn't have a student teacher. So these two poems are from Mr. Marta's class. My class didn't get to these ones. So Mrs. Marta, why don't you do the... Okay. The eagle one for us. Sometimes I feel like an eagle. So I like the way on the branches you have words. Protection, strength, courage, commitment, leadership, and messenger. What were you thinking here? I noticed you've got little loops there. Those are the eggs. Ah. In the nest. Wisdom, honor, respect. And there's a little baby eagle waiting to hatch. <laughs> Eagles have close relationships and work well together. I am the master of the skies. I travel between our world and the spirit world, sending messages, praise, and thanks to the creator. Nice. And then the salmon one, boys and girls. I think Mr. Marta needs a shout out here. <laughs> he spent a lot of recesses drawing those salmon for you. Well, boy, <laughs> boys and girls, I was really impressed. Mrs. Marta and I were talking about how, as we started this poetry, um, it started off kind of pretty simple in regards to pictures but then you want to challenge yourself more and more to get better and better which required a challenge of our yeah. art skills <laughs> so boys and girls really impressive that you want to come up with using the symbol of the salmon that we found in this picture and then well mr martin is not a great artist so i projected it on our screen you saw me trace it out and yes, a lot of recess is coloring, mm -hmm. but it really made your poetry come to life. I'm glad you chose that picture, and I love the mini poems you made around the salmon. That's good that they can challenge you. <laughs> Sometimes I feel like a salmon. And you wanted to use the word determination because mm -hmm. that really represents the life of a salmon. And the little poems you made up was, I provide nutrients and nourishment. Get a fresh start. I symbolize birth and renewal. Bears, whales, people, and trees. Everybody needs me. Hmm. Never give up along with termination. Now that was great because, yeah, the salmon are the building blocks of nature for everything. All right, so we're getting closer to the end. So think about which poems mm -hmm. did we add 
at the end. I'll let you talk about those first in case the boys, tell, tell the story of how this came about for the parents, Mrs. Marta. So Mr. Newman and Teus, Carrie and Teus, decided to add an extra animal to our totem pole to kind of signify the things that we went through with COVID. And they decided the hummingbird was a good symbol for that. And we watched a video, I think that Teus' Teus's uncle, uncle wrote the story and came up with. And the story talked about the hummingbird, even though they're small, being someone who does what they can. So that's what we were all doing in COVID. So then we kind of based our poems on that and we kind of ended up with similar things. Sometimes I feel like a hummingbird, small but courageous, tiny but mighty. I'm doing what I can. And that was the big message we got from that. And then my arms beat like fast wings. I feel like I'm flying high. I move quickly. And then each of these little hummingbirds is dropping a droplet of water on the fire because that's the story of the hummingbird was that there was a forest fire and the hummingbird was just dropping one drop at a time and everyone was saying why are you doing that and she said i'm doing what i can so each of our um, little raindrops say fast determined helpful strong friendly persistent kind and brave and then down in the flames we have i connect with others i try hard i'm a friend to all animals i never give up I don't abandon my friends. I love it. And boys and girls, um, usually when we finished a poem in our classrooms, we would show each class together, but this is the first time our classes are seeing each other's hummingbird poem. So in our Division, th division 12 class, they really liked the, um, the, the one image in the video of the hummingbird story that showed the hummingbird dropping bits of water droplets of water onto the flaming forest so they wanted that as their background and the main theme was i'm doing what i can and then boys and girls in divisions 12 they wanted to really write their poem as single words that represent the hummingbird i love what they came up with brave quick strong determined peaceful powerful helpful mighty tough unstoppable Ooh, unstoppable is a good choice for the last word i love that word for that little animal doing right. what they can all right so okay. the poems are finished and we decided to include one more mm -hmm. picture just in case someone didn't end up in the other one so i hope you're in one or the other or some of the smaller there's, pictures there's still one more picture in the back as well that's true and we also wrote a message to carrie and Teus. Thank you for sharing your time with us, including and connecting with us and teaching and inspiring us. And we have one question for you. Who <laughs> is that in the Spider-Man costume? If you know who that is, send us an email because we cannot remember. So if you recognize this picture, boys and girls, it is dressed as your favorite character from a book day. And so that's what people are dressed up as right now. But we cannot recall who Spider-Man is. And then what's this one? This is Marta. Oh. They haven't seen this. So Mr. Marta and I and all the other teachers got a t-shirt at the end of the year that had the beautiful design on it that you just saw on that page. And it carries a drawing of what the totem pole is going to look like. So we thought that would be a nice way to end the book. So, so this came from the front of either Mrs. Marta's shirt or my shirt. I'm not sure whose shirt it is. But that is what the totem pole drawing is. And that's Carrie's drawing that he lent to the t-shirts. And I know he doesn't mind us putting in the book because the book's for him. All right. So then I turn. We're at the end, but there's one more on the back. We've got a couple of pictures. So the top is when Mrs. Marta's class visited the totem carving early in its stages. Yeah. So Carrie and Teus were teaching us about the carving and letting us have turns. That's when we were all allowed to be really close together. <laughs> and this is the day where Carrie was showing us the different knives that can be used on the totem pole. And you can see the different faces that were visiting that day as well. So boys and girls, fantastic project, right, Mrs. Marta? Yeah, we're really proud of you. We are really proud of how this book turned out. Let's see how this works. And I hope that you will take it out of the library. And I hope that you have a good summer. Have a fantastic summer, boys and girls. Great Don't go yet, <laughs> because we're going to show you Carrie and Teus receiving yes, their books. and great job on this book. This, this, As you'll see, when we hand the book to uh, Carrie and Teus, they were just thrilled. And I can guarantee you tonight, 
they're reading it and loving it and sharing it with their families exactly and i just want to say how proud i am of your poetry skills because the poems that you guys came up with they're amazing and that's what i was going to use it's just not easy to write a poem as a group but you had so many ideas and we talked about it and we debated things and then we worked it out in the end i'm really proud of both you guys. classes did a fantastic job and that not even mentioned that you're in grade two I don't care if this was even a grade nine project. These are fantastic poems for high school. You guys did fantastic. Good job using your poetic license. And as we used to say, you're a poet and you don't even know it. <laughs> so stay tuned <laughs> for the next, the last bit when we present the books to Carrie and Teus earlier today. Thanks, boys and girls. Have a great summer. Bye -bye. Hi, boys and girls. Um, as you know, our plan was to give Teus and Carrie the copies of our book of poetry that you boys and girls made in the classroom so you could have a little celebration, but due to COVID, that didn't happen. But the good news is, we now have the books and we're presenting it today to Carrie and Teus. Guys, those are for you. <laughs> wow. That's it. Oh my goodness. Oh, that's <laughs> awesome. So we're going to read them the book on the video yeah, after. Yeah, so we're going to read. We have a copy at home as well, and we've given one copy to the school library as well. Yeah. Oh, so nice. we're going to read the, 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 the book to the kids online so they can see it as well in advance. Yeah. yeah. That's a really wow. incredible image on the top. It's like, it looks like it's like. That, the, 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 the photos end up, because that's just basically on paper on a green background. We took photos on our phone. Yeah. And what is your phone? Just, yeah, the yep. phone pictures, that was. Wow. All right. I love it. That's incredible. <laughs> thank you so much. Yeah, thank you, everyone.